And that brings us now to the analysis of Shields and Brooks. That is syndicated columnist Mark Shields and New York Times columnist David Brooks. So, gentlemen, I'm actually going to go back to what we were talking about earlier in the program, Mark, and start okay. with John Bolton, uh, the president making a lot of news, making news on his own, tweeting last night the surprise announcement that H.R. McMaster was out, John Bolton's in, and this on top of, as you just heard from Yamiche, one change after another at this White House. What are we to make of this? Well, first of all, I'd like to associate myself with the remarks of Nancy McEldowney, who was on the show. I think she's absolutely right about, uh, about John Bolton. Uh, John Bolton is, is not just uh, ideologically uh, fixed uh, where, uh, where he's been. Uh, he, unlike uh, his uh, apparent foes within the administration, J Jim Mattis, <coughs> Secretary of Defense, and, uh, and uh, Joe uh, Dunford, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, he has uh, never uh, comforted uh, anybody at uh, dying in battle. He's never written to a next of kin. Uh, he uh, avoided military service himself, uh, yet he, it's his prescription uh, for virtually every situation that uh, arises, whether it's North Korea uh, or Iraq, um, for which he has never apologized, for which he was a, a relentless advocate um, and wrong. Um, and and I, so I, I just think temperamentally, Judy, uh, he, is, he is the worst possible choice that Donald Trump could make. Uh, he is brutal to people who work with him. Um, and I just think he, he, what he is, is a flatterer. And uh, Donald Trump, we know, is incredibly susceptible to flattery. David, what do you make not only of Bolton, but just the sequence of changes almost <clears throat> one right after the other? At the well, first on Bolton, I think ideologically, Trump should, probably should have picked him first. You know, I think uh, presidents should pick the sort of person who shares their worldview. And if there's anybody in the Republican foreign policy galaxy who shares Trump's worldview, it's John Bolton. Uh, in the administration, he came up with, a, he was talking about America first long before Donald Trump ever was. Uh, when he served earlier in the, in the earlier Bush administration, he was a relentless foe of sort of the Republican establishment, the Colin Powells. He was a relentless foe of the conservative, of the neoconservatives who w believed in democracy and human rights. He was an old style, what we call paleocon, power versus power kind of conservative. So if Trump at least got somebody who agrees with. Uh, temperamentally, I agree with Mark. He, he was famously thought of as a, a kiss up, kick down kind of guy. Uh, he was famously thought of as someone who did not uh, look at issues honestly, look at intelligence honestly, but came with a highly ideological predisposition. Uh, I don't think he's the worst thing in the world. I, you know, he comes across a lot of issues in a way that I do think seriously increase the chance that we'll have some military action in North Korea and Iran. But he's not a, a complete loon. He just has a, 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 a bellicose old style we need to just need more powerful than anybody else around, and we need to threaten that power all the time, which when you take it, combine it with a temperamentally unstable president, that's a dangerous combination. Yeah, dangerous combination. Danger, a dangerous combination, and I, I think David is uh, uh, suffers from an excess of charity, uh, <laughs> and uh, no, I, I, I agree with his, his analysis up, up to the point. I mean, Donald Trump, if you recall, ran on a foreign policy all by himself that he had opposed the war in Iraq, uh, that he was the only Republican who had, just as Barack Obama was legitimately the only Democrat in 2008 who would oppose the United States going into Iraq, won the nomination and won the presidency. I'm not saying it was the sole reason, but it certainly gave him a uniqueness and distinction that he claimed for himself. Uh, the evidence for it was not necessarily overwhelming that he had been a dove from the outset, but I mean, that is the polar opposite of, of John Bolton in that sense, and Trump wanted a, a less aggressive, a less yeah. assertive American military presence, um, and I, I think the voices of restraint in this administration have been diminished, and I think that, uh, I think it's down to Madison Dunford, um, and I'm, I'm just grateful the two of them yeah. are there. I still think it's uh, far from a sure thing that it will be a super bellicose, super uh, militaristic. You know, the, the foreign policy school that Trump has somehow glommed onto, and then John Bolton definitely subscribes to, really goes back into ancient pre-World War II Republican history, which was much more heartland, much more uh, isolationist almost, but no sense of foreign policy idealism. No, no sense we want to make the world a better place, that we want to give people dignity, we want to give them human rights. That's not part of the equation. It's much more, we're in a great power struggle, and they're tough, and we're tough. And that's just the way they see the world. It's, a, it's an old-fashioned, more as I say, pre-Cold War style of Republican foreign policy, but it de did tend to be not adventurous. 
Uh, and so it, there was some restraint even back in the early America First days. So you don't see them being quick on the trigger? As I say, more quick on the trigger than with Rex Tillerson and H.R. McMaster, that's for sure. But I wouldn't say we're necessarily, you know, marching off to war. I do think Trump still, his instinct is, I don't want to spend uh, blood and treasure abroad. Uh, his constituency does not want to fight another war. Uh, I think he would be slow to want to commit troops anywhere just by his instinct. He's a domestic policy guy. Uh, John Bolton's application for the job was his most recent piece in the Wall Street Journal advocating the legal case for the United States attacking North Korea preemptively uh, and unilaterally. I mean, that, that is not World War, pre-World War II republicanism, which was, if anything, isolationist. Uh, I mean, the, the, the National Security Advisor, Judy, has to be to be successful, an honest broker between defense and treasury and, sec and state yeah. and all the competing interests and present to the president uh, that is still views um, and, and honest options uh, that uh, are advocated by, by the, the, his appointees. And uh, Don, there's no evidence at all that John Bolton is equipped temperamentally uh, or experientially uh, for, for that role. Yeah. I oh. totally agree with that. He, he, he does not fit this job at all. Uh, and I guess the, the one fear you would add is not so much a, what you believe, us, but just a swirl of machismo. Yes, uh, uh, th exactly. This is an administration which is, whose masculinity is, is on high decibel while being extremely <laughs> unstable. Uh, and so yeah. that would be the, the whipping up of the frenzy would be the, the part I'd emphasize. Other I'd than worry that, about. it's very calm. <laughs> um, it, it, so, it, but you not only have all that, these changes, you, all, you have from the outside, and we just heard Yamish talk about this, Mark, the, um, the, the lawsuits from these three women, mm -hmm. two of whom say they had an affair with the president and they're filing suit for, for different reasons. Uh, the third one um, uh, having to do with something related, saying the president um, sexually or harassed her mm -hmm. physically, and she's saying that it, it, she was described as not telling the truth, and she said she's been defamed and she's mm -hmm. suing for that. Meanwhile, you have the Russia investigation going on. The president is rotating now out some of his lawyers. Uh, John Dowd, the lead lawyer, is out with the Russia uh, case uh, investigation. Other lawyers may or may not be coming in. How much jeopardy is could the president be in when it comes to all of this? Well, I, I think I, I, I honestly don't know, Judy, I, I, how much legal jeopardy he's in. I, I would say what he's finding out are yeah, the limitations of being president. I mean, when you're when you're a billionaire on, uh, in New York, real estate, um, and you've got somebody who's going to bring a charge against you, there are ways of dealing with that, uh, whether it's through uh, veiled threats or power. Uh, or talking to people, or money, or payoffs, um, and, and those aren't available to you as president uh, in the same way. And then, so you end up with Michael Cohen, uh, your attorney, uh, claiming unbelievably it doesn't pass the sniff test, it doesn't pass the smell test, it doesn't pass the risibility laugh at test, that he came up with $130,000 out of his own pocket and the goodness of his own heart to get, get Stormy Daniels to drop any action or make anything public about her relationship with Donald Trump. I mean, you know, at some point, at some point in this whole drama, the religious right has to confront itself in the mirror. And it has to look and say, you know, we're not asking the president to be a paragon of personal behavior, but when its behavior apparently reaches the level of just total, total dishonesty and deception, um, and it is, becomes a sham, of the promises he's made, then, you know, we have to withdraw our support. And I just want to challenge the Republicans. Who, besides Jeff Flake and John McCain, out of the hundred, uh, the, the Republicans uh, on Capitol Hill, the hundredth Republican, is going to have the courage and the integrity to stand up and take them on? Yeah, well, I would have thought some of these evangelical Trump supporters would have left uh Trump after the first of the six yes. or seven deadly sins, and now we're up to 800. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not convinced anything else will happen. Maybe if there's photographic evidence that that will change some minds. But, you know, you look at some of the polling. When that Access Hollywood came out, Trump's support yeah. increased. It didn't go down among some of those people because they found themselves in the tribal war, and the logic of tribe kicked in. To me, the Dowd resignation or whatever it was, uh, that's a, a big event. Because it really does signal the uh, Dowd. One of the things he was cooperating with Mueller. This is the lead lawyer. The, the lead yes, lawyer. John Dowd. That's and right. So he was he was wanted to play professionally with Mueller and not be. That's not going to go f full scale war. 
And uh, his departure suggests that full-scale war or something closer to it is, is coming. And the Republicans are going to have to think about that. And if there's any shred that they, if he fires Mueller or we get into this full-scale battle, that they will um, separate themselves from Donald Trump, they better prepare for that now, because it's certainly looking a lot more likely today than last he's, he's right. I mean, the, at this point in the White House, you need an ID card. I mean, to, to say, say hello at a cabinet meeting or a staff meeting, it's, it's, it's changing so fast. And, and for, name and, badge. And, oh, name badge. And for Donald, and for Donald Trump, uh, I mean, as it was said of a British politician, he treats the truth like a, a second home. Um, he, he, he doesn't live there all the time. I mean, we saw that, we saw that on his idle threat today about vetoing the bill. I mean, we, we were told that General McMaster was going to stay, and then he's gone. We were, told, uh, we were told as well that John Dowd and the legal team was intact, and he's gone. Um, and Joe DeGeneva was coming in, and now he's not. Um, so, uh, you know, I, at this point, there's got to be total chaos there. Where do we look for, uh, David, in 15 seconds, for stability in this White House? Uh, it, the, the chaos is the stability. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's in the president himself. It, it's just he's going to be like this as long as he's there. All right. We heard it wow. here. First, wow. <laughs> second, third, <laughs> David Brooks, Mark Shields. Thank you both. <laughs>